What is going on guys? In today's video, I will rank every single weapon combination in Throne and Liberty. So this game has a lot of different weapons and combinations to play and choose from. But the big question is, what are the best and most popular builds slash combinations? I've done a bunch of testing and here are the results. So first off, we have the longbow and staff, and we will place it right in the A tier. This setup is a glass cannon that deals huge amount of damage from long range by maximizing our passives and items. You will need to manage your cooldowns effectively, but if you follow the right build and instructions, then you will be melting anyone that stands in your way. If you play this setup, then I recommend for you to try not to move around too much, so that the rapid fire stance and asceticism procs would give us the highest damage possible. Then as well, in whatever your main rotation is, make sure that you cast the focused firebombs and hellfire raid as much as possible to upkeep the burn stacks. And if you're interested in any of these builds, then feel free to check out my channel for their full build guides. Then for the first S tier, we have Wand and Staff. This is the most versatile healer setup in the game because you can heal while also doing great amount of DPS. As our weapon combination has stronger and more spammable AoE abilities than any other healer combo, so this makes her preferred when farming in the open world and dungeons. If you enjoy traditional mage DPS builds but also want to heal and support allies, then this is the one for you. Next we have Sword and Shield with Dagger, and he deserves to be placed in the C tier. This setup is an agile evasion tank with amazing AoE damage. We will be incredibly tanky thanks to skills like Counter Barrier, while also being able to dish out big damage with Cleaving Moonlight and Thunderclouds bombing. Overall, this build has high CC, really good mobility, high AoE DPS, and most importantly, low cooldowns. So if you want to be an evasion tank that can hold enemies aggro, but also do decent amount of DPS, then this is the build for you. Then for the next S tier, we have Crossbow and Dagger. This is currently the highest DPS setup in the game because both of your weapons have extremely high damage and if you use the right build, then you will consistently reach 20 stacks of thunderclouds which will give you explosive damage. And you can activate this every few seconds. Crossbow and daggers are both unique weapons because they are dual wielded. What makes dual wielding so unique is that for every attack you do with these weapons, there is a chance to get double hit with their offhand. And on top of that, you can even increase the chance of this by using the selfless diffusion, which will increase your damage by 2 or even 4 times. Next we have Greatsword and Dagger, which also deserves to be in the S tier. At first, this build may seem like just another bruiser, however, thanks to passive skills like Vital Force and Cold Warrior, its damage output can be very high. Greatsword and Dagger revolves around rotating your buffs into your DPS skills. Daggers have higher attack speed, so keeping them out may allow you to get additional attacks off in between skills, while the Greatsword skills will keep you protected and give you the best buff in the game. Also, even though most players prefer to stack as much HP as possible because of the Vital Force, we'll still be increasing our damage while getting more tankier at the same time. So, if you want to be a melee assassin with the most popular weapon in the game, the Greatsword, then this is the one for you. Next up we have Longbow and Crossbow and he deserves to be in the A tier. Because of high bonus damage stacking and these two weapons having the ability to throw out a massive number of hits, the Longbow and Crossbow players are among the best. Also, by building up from your skills and passives, you'll get low cooldowns and have a very high amount of hit chance, ensuring that you can keep doing DPS for a very long time. The main goal of this build and your skill rotation is to use few skills to increase our damage at cast time. So if you want to play a build that is similar to a machine gun, then this is the one for you. Then for the next A tier, we have Staff and Dagger. This setup is a mage assassin that at his full potential provides up to 200 heavy attack chance and 150 skill damage boost. But because of the high cooldowns in this build, you'll need plenty of cooldown speed to reach your full potential. And without it, you'll be not as good. So this setup is amazing but will require decent enough gear to reach the highest damage possible. This build has insane amount of high single target burst damage, and its main playstyle will revolve around maintaining 10 burning stacks and 20 thundercloud stacks, which will provide exceptional AoE and single target DPS. So if you're looking for a deadly PvE and PvP build, then this is the one for you. 
Then for one of the last 8 tiers, we have Sword and Shield with Greatsword. This setup will focus on utilizing the strengths of both of these weapons for a ton of HP and heavy attack chance. When you get the best gear, you'll have one of the best AoE farming potentials in the game because of passives like Spectrum of Agony, and also because of active skills that can work off of each other such as Frost Cleaving and Ice Tornado. As a tank, you'll be redirecting 70% of your teammates' damage taken, while at the same time significantly increasing your party's damage. And on top of all this, we will be doing insane amount of damage as by using specific skills and passives, we'll lower our cooldowns dramatically. Next up we have Longbow and Wand, and we will place it right in the A tier. This setup is great for party-wide buffs in the form of cooldown reduction, mana regeneration, critical hits, and accuracy. This is a very versatile healer build because you can heal while also doing great amount of DPS. Our weapon combination has strong buffs and more spammable skills, so this makes her preferred over other healer setups. By taking advantage of unique skills such as Nature's Blessing, you'll ensure that your party has the best mana sustain throughout a boss fight. So if you enjoy traditional ranged builds but also want to heal and support your allies, then this is the one for you. Then for the next B tier, we have Longbow and Dagger. In this setup, the Longbow provides high single target DPS at range, while the Dagger provides amazing passives. This build's pros are that you get really good self-sustain and high single target DPS, but you are very reliant on cooldown speed, so you'll want to make your build around reducing as much waiting time as possible. Most of your skills will line up to around the same cooldown by using the correct specialization. So if you follow my build's instructions, then you should be able to do high amount of damage 24-7. This build's main rotation is to initially use Strafing and Zephyr's Knock, which will give us max Thundercloud stacks. So then we would want to use Shadow Escape to move behind the enemy and do big damage with the Thunderclouds bombing and the rest of our huge DPS skills. Next we have Greatsword and Crossbow, which deserves to be placed right in the B tier. This setup is very unique because by using Vital Force and Cold Warrior, we will increase our skill damage by a massive amount. Our main build's focus is on the Mortal Mark skill because when it gets activated, we'll see huge damage numbers. Also, we will stack very high amounts of heavy attack chance, hit, and skill damage boost, while also having big HP and DPS numbers. If you're looking for a fun and versatile melee bruiser build, then here it is. Next we have Sword and Shield with Wand, and he is also in the B tier. I like to call this build as the Paladin setup. This one is very unique in the sense that we are going to be a tank that can heal at the same time. If you're playing in a group with a healer, then just focus on defending teammates and healing yourself. But if you're not solo or in a group without a healer, then just focus on tanking while healing the guys that are the lowest HP. So if you're ready to not even feel the enemy hits and still have the ability to heal and do great damage, then this is the build for you. Then for one of the last B tiers, we have Staff and Crossbow. This build will work by spamming skills like Quick Fire and Fireball Barrage right when they come off cooldown. But as we are high spam and high damage, so we will need a lot of mana regen as well. And that's why you'll want to use skills like Inner Peace and Mana Exchange. If you're ready to stack high dexterity, cooldown speed, and bonus damage to achieve super high DPS, then this is the build for you. Then for the next C tier, we have Wand and Dagger. This setup is a support build that can still do big damage and is more oriented towards mixing melee and ranged playstyles. By us combining a mixture of survivability and damage with skills like Thunderclouds bombing and swift healing, we will be able to do both, so deal big damage while keeping our teammates alive. Also, this build will require decent mana region to perform well, so to achieve the highest numbers possible, we'll need to use the right items and specializations. Next we have another C tier setup which is the Greatsword and Staff. This one is known as the Sentinel build that makes use of the Staff's bind inflicting freeze skills in conjunction with the Greatsword's charge skills to cut down enemies with ease. Since this build has extensive cooldowns, its playstyle acts like a sniper where you wait until the opportune moment to unleash your devastating attacks with the proper sequencing. Personally, I've seen very few players making this build work but sooner or later, they give it up for a different setup because of the lack of damage. And then finally, we have come to the F tier. And the weapons that deserve to be in here is Wand and Longbow, Sword and Shield with Staff, with Bow, and with Crossbow. 
then also greatsword with wand and greatsword with longbow. All of these weapon combinations are for sure the bottom of the barrel. If in the C tier we already had setups that you can rarely see, then in this tier I'm pretty sure you could count the amount of players playing these setups. And that's not because they're not fun or unique, but because they're just not viable and they don't match well with the other weapon. So if you're using any of the F tier weapons, I strongly recommend to rethink your build choices. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. If you're interested in more content, check out my channel and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace.